Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Eyal. I, I believe most of you know me already. Uh, with us is uh, Professor Mazem Tamimi. And uh, before I will uh, invite him to start and speak, I would like to say a few words about uh, Professor uh, Tamimi. So uh, Professor Dr. Mazem uh, Tamimi, PhD, oral and maxillofacial surgeon. He's the member of the scientific advisory board of the IMC University of uh, Duisburg, Essen in Germany. Visiting professor at University of Detroit in USA, visiting professor at Cairo University in Egypt, president of uh, IBOI, International Board of Oral Implantology, and the president of Tamimi Academy. Later on, Professor Tamimi will speak few words about the academy because you can get points, uh, education points from uh, his academy. Chairman of uh, Gardens Dental Implant Center. Um, the qualification, he is a graduate of the College of Dentistry University of Jordan in uh, 1989, or a maxillofacial surgeon from uh, 2001 and PhD from 2005, Master of Science in Implantology and Dental Surgery in, the, in, in a joint degree in Germany 2014, Master of Oral, Oral Medicine and in Implantology in uh, Munster University, which still today he is a lecturer there, Specialist in Implantology in Germany and Certificate, sorry, I cannot read the German, it's too long word, uh, but uh, he's an expert in implantology since 2001. And he is part of the German Board of Oral Implantology since 1998, and fellow and diplomat in ICOI, which many of you are also fellows. And the occupational activities, he's a maxillofacial consultant at the Garden Dental Implant Center in Amman, Jordan. Visiting maxillofacial consultant at Queen Hospital, Qatar, course instructor and speaker in many international conferences and workshops worldwide, like the one that we are going to have now in, in a short version. Former international president of uh, the German, uh, forgive me because I don't know exactly the name, maybe what I mean we can say, and BGZI. former head of DGZI, what is it, yeah. please? The uh, German Association of Dental Implantology. Okay, and former head of the Executive Examination Committee of the German Board. So uh, please welcome Professor Tamimi, and uh, I hope you get a good uh, uh, lectures. And after Professor Tamimi lecture, you can you can ask why the questions why you have questions. Please write them down. You have a place you can write them down. I will see it. And later on, after the end of the lectures, I will uh, represent you the questions to uh, Professor Tamimi, and he will answer. And, uh, and after that, I will give a short uh, commercial part of this, uh, this uh, webinar. So Professor Tamimi, uh, thank you very much. And please start your lecture. Hello, good afternoon, everybody from India and around the world. And I'm so happy to meet with you today with this uh, webinar. I already been in India more than five times and I really, every time I am in your beautiful country, I enjoy it. But now due to the COVID things, we will meet only through the online webinar. And anyway, we are uh, happy that we can share our experiences and what is up to date in oral implantology. <coughs> Actually, we will start sharing the screen so you would know what we are talking about. And I'll try during my webinar, all right, to give you all the surgical solution and prosthetic solutions, all right, and the backward planning in this uh, webinar. I will have my webinar divided into three parts. I will speak a first part about the implants itself and what is the features of it because I'm using the system since more than 10 years. 
and I already have done so many cases and restored so many cases. So I will share with you why I love this implant. Then I will try to show you with the camera physically some of the parts. So you can also see it, how it is looks in the actual part. Then the third part, which is like very interesting for the dentist is the clinical cases. So I will share with you different clinical cases that I have solved using the system and you can see the prosthetic and the end results and the long-term follow-up. Allow me just to share with you a very short video for one minute, an idea of what we are having. So, Right, so actually one year ago, uh, I have launched a new concept of, uh, or a new generation of education and certification. We want to move the people who are doing implants to a level that they are recognized internationally. And we need the people to get the best education, not only with like a sponsored company webinars or whatsoever, we need it to be generic information. We need the people to be recognized with their education. We need to help the people, especially the beginners, how to place implants in the right way. We don't want to learn by doing. We need you guys to take the experience from the expert people, what they are doing, and you place implants from day one with a good success. We don't want like the old generation when we learned from our mistakes and we have the failures. We don't want you to have failures at all. And that's why that was the concept that we launched last year. And we were making a very big plan, but unfortunately due to COVID, now we are implementing all our also new generation of education, but all of it will be online and we'll try really with the technology to coordinate and pass the information that we want to our students and residents in order to get the best they can do from uh, this education, even if there is like physical contacts as like prohibited at the moment. But I am optimistic now with the 2021 and with the coming of the vaccine, life will come back to normal in the next few months, I hope. Now, the good thing, and also as Mr. Bonnet said, uh, by the end of the webinar, we will give a verification code and that means that you participated in this activity and you will get a CE points because we are, Tamimi Academy is an officially accredited by the American Dental Educa Academy uh, or Association as a recognized provider. So I don't know in India if you need these uh, CE hours for renewing the license like the colleagues they need it in America or in England or in Europe. So you have the chance to acquire these uh, CE points and we will arrange with AIM Academy later how we can give you the certificates. Of course, gonna be an electronic certificates for your participation and this only will be given to the people that they gonna stay till the end of the webinar for sure. All right, because uh, that means you have attended the time of the webinar. I think our webinar today will be a little bit long. If I will speak in details, and uh, complete all my three parts. I think I will need uh, two hours, but I'll try not to keep you long, but uh, I will go as fast as possible. I hope uh, there will be not much beginners with us, so at least they can catch up what we are seeing. This is the IBOI. This is the certificate that it is internationally accepted and you will be recognized. The requirements to get these certificates 
is that you need to, to collect about 200 CE points officially accepted by the American Dental Association. Plus you need to do oral and written examination and the presentation of cases during the exam and oral examination. So once you pass all these steps, you can uh, be awarded this uh, diplomat status of the IBOI. I hope we can continue in communication and you can email me and you can log into the website and you can see all my contacts and I'm really happy to guide you if you are interested to move and get an international certificate, the IBOI. And of course, the, we have a partner, uh, not only with the uh, associations like the American Dental Association, because the MIMI Academy is the official uh, recognized uh, provider of the CE points, plus the International Medical College and the Diceburg Essen University are taking the IBOI as integrated as part of their master degree and actually our graduates who have the IBOI, they have the chance to complete the master degree in Germany. And at the moment are doing it online and they will save time, lectures and part of the tuition because they have already an advanced degree, which is the IBOI. So this is the teamwork from all the partners. And of course, uh, we are now making the clinical facilities all right, to be the dentist, his own clinic due to COVID. Otherwise, before we used to bring the participants, we provide them with the patients where they can perform all the surgeries themselves on the patients at Garden Dental Implant Center, okay, as a recognized clinical training institute for Diceburg University and for the IBI. But at the moment, we took a decision that the dentist himself, he needs to record his cases make good documentation, and these are accepted for the examination or for the clinical requirements of the master degree. All right, so I will start now with my first part after this short introduction and talk about Implant Swiss. And what is Implant Swiss and what is unique about it? Of course, Implant Swiss is a dental implants manufactured in Switzerland with the high precision of and reputation of Switzerland. The implants, as you can see here, we will talk in details about the design. So it's not only like really a screw. I will try to focus on the importance or why I love this implant and why it, this implants is really unique. These implants, they come in bone level, all right, as you can see it here. And there is an hexagonal in index inside. And at the same time, it is cone more stable. And this conical connection is proved that it will distribute the forces much better and there will be no screw loosening and there is no loosening of the abutments. So there is a double rigid connection between the abutments and the implants with the cone mores and with the internal hex. So you can see the way the abutment goes inside the implants and that is, an, the, that is the importance of the precision of the manufacturing, that you have a perfect fit and which is important. The design itself is really very unique and innovative. If you can see, the implant has like two parts. One is a straight part and one is a tapered part. And this did not come out of nothing because we know about the stresses that the implant can cause to the bone. So that's why this hybrid design has an advantages and I will discuss with you the advantages. So if you can look here very well in the monitor, the top three millimeter are really straight, all right? And the bottom rest of the implant is tapered. And what is the importance of this? You can see that this hybrid de design will minimize the crystal stress because it is straight and the rest of it will make the implants to go easily in the osteotomy site. So every time we need a conical implants to go easily and at the same time that we need it, that it has a good straight design that it will prevent the stress on the cortical bone or on the crystal bone. And that's where always the problem happens. And that is really the importance when you go to buy like cheap implants or you buy implants from a high, reputable company that you can see these things. The other things that we are also focusing on it is the platform switching. 
because all the modern design of implants is really achieved in this implant because a lot of companies before they were making like a classical platform and then it was approved that the platform switching where you are getting the connection between the abutment and the implants away from the crystal bone it proved that the bone stays and i have some cases in the same patients where i used on one side a classically platform implants and i used on the other side a platform switching and you can see the bone is there all the time on the side where you use platform switching and the other side you can have some v-shape resorption or whatsoever so there is a concept that everybody agreed about it there's so many articles published and talking about the advantage of the platform switching so you can have it in this system and and that is the importance where it comes the platform switching so the abutment is away from the crystal bone and that is the importance of it even with the histology we're looking at it and we can see that the bone is always stable there because the micro genes or the pathogens are away from the crystal bone because every time no matter how hygienic is the patient's always the mouth has pathogens and these pathogens they are around the abutment around the crown so if you can get it away from the crystal bone, then you are saving the crystal bone. And even when you look at the threads, even these threads are also studied very well. They are cutting edge, so they can cut easily in the bone, and this will decrease the stress. And at the same time, these threads, all right, add to its self-cutting, it will help in the primary stability. So this is very important because if we don't have a primary stability, we will never have an osteointegration. And look also at the neck, the last one millimeter of the implant is straight. It has no threads at all because even if we have some pathogens, it will be easily to be cleaned, all right? So the micro threads are absent at the crystal part of the implants, which is very, very important. So all these things are considered. Now, from the macro design, we go to the micro design, the surface treatment, because the surface treatment is also very important for every implant in order to decrease the healing time, the osteointegration time. So with implant Swiss, they have all the implants are sandy blasted, all right, roughened acid H and double acid H. And when we mean by double acid H, that means it will be during manufacturing. These implants are subjected to twice, all right, acid etching. That means increasing the porosity. That means trying to mimic, okay, the osteoplast. So the osteointegration is faster. So this is also very important. And you can see it under electronic microscope, how the SRA surface looks like. So with such special surface, we are decreasing the healing time or the osteointegration time or the loading time because osteoblasts will integrate faster than a classical implant surface design and treatment. You can see how it is with a high precision of manufacturing that it is even and unique. So all the SRA is equal in every part of the implants because you can see during manufacturing, this is not an easy process because of the law of structure and the texture of the implants. But when you do double acid H, you are guaranteeing that you are having a uniform design and surface of the implant. The other thing we want you to share with you, because every dentist, when he's making his plan, that he needs to be comfortable with the different diameters and length that he can have. So with Implant Swiss, you can have implants as narrow as a 3.3 and as wide as 5.5. So I think in most of the cases, you don't need bigger than 5.5 and you don't need thinner than 3.3. So you have all the diameters. Concerning the lengths, you have lengths from 8, 10, 12, and 14 millimeter. And actually, nobody is now manufacturing any more longer than 14 millimeter because all the studies has proven that for the length is not really very important. So once you have 14 millimeter, this is the maximum length that you can benefit out of it 
for the implants. So the longer does not mean anything. The same time also, we have the tissue level implants for the people who love Stroman, for example. So you have the, the tissue level implants, that means the one stage healing of, for the implants, and you can have it also from diameter of 3.7, 4.3, 4.8, and 5.5, and you have it with different lengths, even extra, we start from six millimeter with these, all right? And you can see this unique packing, as you can see it here. And this is really very important for the assistant when she prepared the implants for the surgeon. And there is something very, really unique. And many people, they don't know about it, is how to mount the implant inside the sterile vial. And implant Swiss, they are using the peak. And the peak, this is very important in order to avoid okay, any corrosion or contamination between the holder of the implant and the implant itself because the peak is very inert material. So this is very important. This is very expensive part, even though they are using it because they believe that the implant has to be safe from any mechanical or chemical, okay, contamination, all right? The surgical kit is very easy. It is color coded. And the very important thing, especially for the beginners, we have a drill with a stopper for each length. So there is no risk that you can drill deeper or you can hurt the inferior alveolar nerve or you go to the sinus lift because it has a stopper. And I know every time with, when I am with my residents, when they are using different implant systems, they are afraid they need to look where is the marking and they have to stop. But here, there is an individual drill for each individual length. And this is very important and all the tools are in one kit and in a nice sterilization box that you can use. Implant Swiss did not stop at this level because also the fashion of short implants came up in the market. So they followed up and they modified the design in order to bear loading the occlusal forces with short implants because not every implant with a short length can carry the loads. So it has to be a special design of the threads. So Implant Swiss, after big research, they come up with this special design and they were able to make five millimeter and six millimeter from the 4.3, from the 4.8 and from the 5.5. So we are able to offer to the dentist a short implants as short as five millimeter with the Tissue level, we were able to offer four millimeter also because there is the polished surface or the tissue level surface is another like two millimeter, but this is above the bone. This is in the soft tissues. So now we have four millimeter and this is, I think, the shortest implant in the world, but it's not really important what short it is. You, the importance is the design that can be magnified the surface area. So if I have a four millimeter implants, I need a special design that the surface area, the total surface area of the implant is like 10 millimeter of implants. And this can happen by two means, by the special macro design of the implants. If you can look here and you can see the lot of anatomy on it. And at the same time is the double acid itching, the surface treatment. So you are increasing the surface area where the osteoplasts are attached to the implants. Of course, the short implants, you are not using it every day and you are not using it in the, for every case. That's why we made a special surgical kit only for the short implants, all right? So you have the drills for the four millimeter, for the five millimeter, for the six millimeter, whether it is a tissue level or a bone level implants, and you have the same keys actually what you are using for the the classical implants, because this is a point I want you to know that all the internal connection is the same for the prosthetic. And that's what we come now to talk about the prosthetic. All the prosthetic parts, whether they are for 3.7 or 4.3 or 4.8 or 5.5, they are all fit together. So it doesn't matter if you have an abutment in your inventory for 3.7, you still can use it for the implant of 5.5. No problem, you will have a platform switching concept. So it is there. So the diameter of the abutment is not really 
important and that makes easier for you that you don't need to have too much inventory. But at the same time, only the 3.3 implants, because it's a very thin implant, it has its unique abutments because it is very small for the uh, connection with the hex and with the uh, cone mores. Otherwise, they are all the same. And what is also unique and about implant Swiss that all our prosthetic parts are compatible with two famous implant systems. So our bone level is compatible with the Astra and our tissue level are compatible with the Stroman. So I also could see many colleagues who are users of Stroman or people using of Astra, they can use our apartments without any problem. Healing abutments, of course, for the tissue level, for the bone level, different heights, it can match all your clinical cases. So that is a good thing about the variety. You want short healing abutment, you will find. You want very long healing abutment because you have very thick gum. Yes, also you can find it. And you can see and appreciate how beautiful is the healing of the tissue. This is important, especially in the aesthetic zone when we're talking about the emergency profile how you want to create a nice gum to mimic the situation where you can see the crown is like erupting from the gum. And this is very important. So I want you to look at it. The prosthetic is very important for many dentists and they look at it in every time. What do we have a prosthetic varieties? Because a lot of implant systems, they are very limited. But with Implant Swiss, they have all the options available in the market. They have it in their system. So if you want, a solid system, that means one piece for the abutment and the fixation screw, yes, you can have it. And with the same concept of the platform switching. And you have all the parts that you might need from healing abutment, from the impression cap, from the laboratory analog, to the wax up for the crowns. If you are using metal crowns, they are all there. So it's a complete system available so for the dentists who do they, they like to have the solid system because maybe it is cheaper also and easier for some is single tooth implants or for uh, multiple parallel implants, yes, you can use it. And the steps as simple as this, once you make the implants, you can put the healing abutments after the healing period, you can fix the abutments, you can take an impression, whether it is a closed tray as you can see here, and you pick up the impression, you can put the healing abutment. This is the implant analog, as you can see it here. And you can use the adjustment that you want on the cast because it is gonna be the same abutment which gonna go inside the patient's mouth. You can adjust the occlusion. You can make the burnout. If you are using it a metal or you wanna use it uh, with the ceramic or whatsoever, then your crown can be ready and inserted and tested with this accuracy. The other colleagues like me, myself, I like the couple system where you have the fixation screw and the abutments are separate as you can see it here and you have the complete line. So actually you don't need to have all these systems. It depends on what you are happy with or you are familiar with. So if you wanna have the solid system, yes, it is there. If you want to have the cobalt system, yes, it is available with all diameter, with all sizes, the height of the tissue also, it is there. So you can have a very nice shoulder on the abutment. That, that, that means an excellent fabrication of a crown. That means there is no black accumulation, no risk for peri-implantitis, and you need to have the finish line is exactly on the tissue level. So there will be no cement that can go inside the gum and you cannot clean it. So you choose the abutment gingival height according to your clinical situation. So you can have it from one millimeter to two to three to four to five to six, because sometimes we need really a long abutments because the interocclusal space is big. So you can have it. You can have a straight abutments. You have angulated abutments. You have the transfer, the implant analog, all right? and all the parts, whether it is for the tissue level or for the bone level, it is available. All you need just to open your catalog and make the order according to your case and your situation. So there is no way that you are ending up 
that you cannot solve the prosthetic solution. If you are happy, for example, for the open tray system technique, yes, we have a special transfer or impression abutments where you can use your plastic trays, as you can see here, you can unscrew, all right, the impression post and pick it up and then mount the implant analog with a full accuracy. And this is very important. Look, for example, this case, you might have in many cases that the implants are not on the same parallelism. And when you have an excellent transfer with long and rigid connection with the implants, it will never move in the impression, and that is the accuracy. So we don't have to make the dural lay anymore to mount these impression posts together because they are really fixed in the impression accurately. Then you can select your abutments. The technician can on the parallelometer make the parallelism and he can fabricate the bridge without any problem. And you can see a passive fit 100%. Why? Because there is no changes. And this is one really I want to tell you colleagues, this is like really pain in the neck for many, many cases. When you have the impression post or the impression transfer has been moving inside the impression. Then you have the ridge, a big bridge ready and you want to try it, it will never go. Why? Because the impression or the transfer is not really fixed 100% in the impression. So this is very important. So to have such cases that it's finished with accuracy and saving your clinic time. This is why I like the couple system. I only spend the time to make a good impression and then I am relaxed because I know that the impression is very accurate. My technician can select the abutments himself. He can grind them to make a perfect parallelism. He can fabricate my bridge, whether it is PFM, porcelain fused to metal, whether it is a zirconia, and I am sure and confident if I have a good technician that everything will fit perfectly without any hassle because I am confident of my impression transfer. Look, another case, whatever you are doing, no matter what our liberalism is, it is always accurate. You can mount the abutments later on and this is the special tray if you have multiple implants, as you can see here. And, and this is really the open tray system is completely and perfectly accurate. You can pick up an impression, as you can see here. You need to pick up the impression, as you can see here. And this is in some cases where you can have a closed tray because some colleagues, maybe they don't have the interocclusal space and they want a closed system. So with the closed system, you pick up the impression, you get it outside, and this is the time you need to unscrew the impression post and put it back inside the impression. And you need, in this way, a special design of the transfer that it will exactly go back in place as you took the impression. So in every sys emblem system, <coughs> excuse me, you have the choice to choose an open tray or to choose a closed tray impression technique. And both techniques, we call them the indirect impression technique. So it depends on your preference and on the case, all right? So if you wanna have an open tray, yes, there is a special impression post, you can have them. If you want a closed impression tray, we have a different uh, impression transfer and you can use it also with the same accuracy. We have now a complete also different line called the Octa system, all right? For people who are familiar with it and they like screw retained crowns and the bridges, yes, the Octa system is the best to use. And also the Octa system has a complete range from the healing abutments to the impression coping to the lab implants and to the lab cylinders and the fixation screws. And I never seen any screw fractured with implanted Swiss. And this is very important because we know the hassle when we were using different implant systems before and also with our colleagues, they are telling us about their bad experience of a screw fracture. And this is really pain in the neck. So once you have really a good quality of screws that it will never break, no matter how small it is, 
then you are really confident that you can tighten your abutment with 20 Newton or 25 Newton, all right? And you have an excellent stability of the abutment on the implants, as we said earlier, due to the hex connection and the conical connection. So both together, you will never have the headache of screw loosening. And you can take the transfer no matter what, even if the implants are not parallel, because they will come out due to the special connection. You can use the impression classically. All the parts are there. You can adjust the occlusion. You can make a wax up. You can burn it. You can make it metal, or you can scan it and make zirconia. Same procedure, then it is a screw retained, okay, concept. And this is really also for the colleagues who like screw retained crowns. So you have the option. You want screw retained, you have it. You want such system. And even you can control this during surgery. You can mount the octa system inside the surgery because they are very short. So it's like one stage healing. There will be no loading during the healing time. So you can use it and you can put the uh, healing caps. You can suture, you can take your X-ray and you are confident that your implants are there and you are saving a second stage of opening the surgery. You can control that your impression is accurate, that the impression transfer are 100% on the implants. You can take an X-ray so you are sure that the transfer is sitting on the implants. Even for big cases like this case with the octa system, yes, you can do it. So all the implants are there, the transfer is there, and you can do even immediate loading for some cases. Because you are confident, you don't want to delay the whole procedure to later time. And you then you wait for the healing with the same special healing caps, as you can see it here. And then you can fabricate your bridges, screw retained, finished and you can seal the opening of the screw. Everything has the option available. So really, I haven't seen very few implant systems around the world where you can have the whole complete system as you can see here. And you need to have the confidence even when you have no parallelism and with this big variations. For the overdenture cases, yes, also we have the O-ring system, it is available and all the complete parts from the O-ring, the different elastics that it is hard or soft, where you can use it also for such cases are also available. So these are the O-ring system. It is there complete with the different diameters, with the different height, whether you are using tissue level, whether you are using bone level, everything we have it in our inventory and that is making it unique. So you can also have, you can see here the O-ring in different uh, strength and power according to your patients with different designs, all is available. And that is really the peace of mind that you can have it. Also, there's some people, they like the locator system. Yes, we do have. We have the locator system. We have the parts for all our diameters and you can use it and it's easy used and all the parts are there with a complete design. These are the locators. This is how you fix them inside the denture where you can change them after a certain time. For people who are still using the bar system, I used this bar system maybe 20 years ago, all right? It is available. So you still can, if you are believing in the bar system, yes, it is there, the parts are there and you can order them and use them. So, these are all the different varieties. Of course, you don't need to buy all the parts or to use all the parts. Every case has different indications, but whatever you want, yes, it is there. I don't know if many people, they are still using the bars, but it is here. But also the modern concept of the multi-unit abutments, yes, we do have. So we have the multi-unit abutments are available whether from the Octa system or the classical system. And there is also, we have a special kit where you can easily select the abutments because all in four cases, all in four is very good solution for many cases where it is much cheaper for the patients and you can use the all in four for cases where you have no bone above the nerve, where you have no bone under the sinus, 
So you can place your implants where you have bone, you tilt them to 30 degrees, you have the abutments, the multi-unit abutments are available. Also, if you want to be digital, you want to use the CAD CAM, yes, we have a complete line of the digital transfer and the digital abutments and even the individual abutments, yes, you can have it. And before I go to the zygomatic implants, I like to share with you, to show you the actual part on the camera. So it's not only in a photo, so you can imagine what we have. So for example, the multi I want to start backward with the multi-unit abutments, which is very important because I know many, many colleagues, they always will ask, what do we mean by the multi-unit abutments? Multi-unit, that means it is more than one unit abutment. So that means you need to have the different parts. So let me share with you, I will show you now, when I open these bags and I will show it to you in the camera, and I hope it will be very accurate. So you can imagine how the parts can come and you can see how it is. So for example, when you are making cases of all in four, there's two implants are straight, there's two implants are tilted, right? So you need to see the parts which are straight and then you can fix them. And then you make the impression later on the level of the abutment. So with the multi-unit abutments here, if you can see with me, I'll try to share it with you. This is here. So this is how it looks, the multi-unit abutment, as you can see it here. So this part, it goes in the implant and this is the first part of the abutment. That's why we call it multi-unit abutment. So once you put this, this will remain inside the implants. Then you need a special transfer because you want to transfer everything back. So this is the transfer where you mount it on the first part. Let me show you. So this is, for example, here is the first part of the multi-unit abutment. This is, for example, a transfer. So you mount this transfer exactly on the implants and you have the fixation screw, as you can see it here. You can put it on the top, it is fixed. So this is the time where you are making the impression, okay, over the abutment. So you are not making the impression on the implant level. You are making the impression on the abutment level. So this is the first part where it will can align the four implants, which are 30 degrees or the implants who are zero degrees on the same level because from these multi-unit abutments, we have the 30 degrees and the zero degrees. Once you finish your impression, you remove it, all right? You move it to the transfer, then you have the analog, and then also for some colleagues, you can see here, so the implant analog, okay, it comes the two parts together. I know, the, pro the prosthetic is very confusing for many colleagues, but that's why I try to make it for you easy. So if you have the implant is inserted, then you put the first multi-unit abutment and you took the impression, you need an analog, you need an analog, an implant analog that it is exactly in the same shape of the implant and the multi-unit abutment because we are making the impression on the abutment level. So this, after you transfer it, you need to fix it, all right, inside the impression. So this is the same transfer, and this is the special implant analog, all right? You can see it here. And then you can, in the laboratory, fix the plastic part, as you can see it here. This is the plastic part, all right, where you mount it on the implant analog, all right? I will also open it for you so you can see. And this is the time where you need to fabricate your one piece bridge for the multi-unit abutments. So this is the same plastic where I will mount it, all right, exactly in the cast on the model, and then the technician can complete the bridge. So all these parts are really available, all right? It's not really difficult. I know for all my residents, once we start to make any case of multi-unit abutments for all in four, they get confused, not in the surgery. The surgery is easy. Just 
you have a surgical or drilling guide, 30 degrees and straight in the middle. The two uh, implants are angulated and two are straight. The surgery is perfect, but now how to complete, how to make a perfect impression and an accurate impression. So the best thing is to use the multi-unit abutments and you can really as simple as that. So I focused on this part because I know that it is a little bit confusing for many colleagues, the multi-unit abutments. But once you do in your life, the first case, trust me, all the cases will be the same. Only the first case can be difficult. But as you can see here, I made it easy for you. It's only multi-unit abutment. That means it's two parts. One part that fixed on the implants and it is there. You make the impression on the abutment level, all right? Then the technician will make you the bridge. Then it is easily, you can screw it and fix it because you already compensated the angulation in an easy way, all right? Let me show you also the other prosthetic parts quickly. I want you to see it physically as it is. So we have, for example, here, the uh, O system, all right? So the O system is also the same. I will also show you some parts here. We open this and I want to show you how is the O-ring. So the O-ring abutment, it comes like this. It is also platform switching. So the same concept, even with overdenture, it is there. So the O-ring, you can fix it on the implants. All right. If you want to put it direct and put the ring inside the denture, yes, you can do it. If you want to do the whole job with the technician, you can still take an impression. And there is also the same thing. We have a transfer. We have an implant analog. So this is the transfer, as you can see it here. Yes, it is very clear. We have the, okay, the implant analog is exactly an implant and has the ring or the uh, ball inside the implant analog. Does that also make it easier, all right, for the- Professor Tamimi? Yes. Uh, there was a request that when you show parts, if you can do a full screen, is it possible? Full screen. In case you show in your in your uh, camera some yeah. parts, if you can do a full screen for this moment, so they will see the part in a larger uh, uh, way. I Thank will. You. I will try. I will try if I can do it with Thank a full you. screen. So I don't know how I will switch it to only camera full screen. <laughs> Camera full screen only. I'll try to for, to come to the camera closer. I don't know really how to do it, how to share only the camera for the screen. Do you, you need to you need to uh, stop sharing and then yes. reopen sharing after you finish showing. So then you can show in uh, full size. Okay, so we here stay stop share. Stop share. Yes. Okay. So now this is better. Yes. Now now. Uh, show it again what you want to show okay so this is for example the octa system all right is it now better for the colleagues do you see it in a better way stop, stop moving your head fix the for one second the hand yeah it's better like this exactly Out of focus, but it's better yeah so this is, for example, the octa system. What I wanted you to see that the actual part that even the analog itself, you, you will never get confused. So whatever system you are using, that you have the parts coming together, all right? And what is really unique, whatever you are using the analog or you are using the, I will show you, for example, here, the abutment itself, look here. This is also the same part. The conical connection is there and the octa is there, no matter what you are using. So this is the the parts that I wanted really to share with you in order not to get confused because the parts are a lot, but once you order, everything is labeled. Everything is labeled. 
So you have a very nice box, as you can see here. So the box, for example, here we have, here what we do, here we have the uh, locator. So the look example, the locator system. So you want the locator itself, the female part. It comes in a nice box as this. You can see all the reference number is written on it, the size and everything in this small box. So every part of the prosthetic, it comes like this. So this is like this in the Octa system it is the same thing. I know that it is not really in focus, but I would just want to give you the confidence because I know many, many colleagues, they can get confused, okay, with the prosthetic. I want you to know just the system. And once you order from the company, they will give you all the parts with the reference number individually sterile and it is packed in a very nice packing so there is no way that you can mix it up all right so that is generally i as i showed you we have thousands let's say of parts if you go to our catalog and you look you will see really thousands of parts of the prosthetic and uh, you don't want to get confused you only decide the case, and once you decide the case, all the parts are available. All the parts are available. When I mean all the parts from the prosthetic, what do we need? Let us count them together again. Once you wanna start a prosthetic stage, you need healing abutment with different length, with different emergency profile. Yes, we have it. You need an impression coping, a transfer whether it is for coupling, whether it is for the solid abutments, whether for the, it is the octa, whether for the multi-unit abutments, we will give it to you. So you don't need to be mixed up. And the box has the name of it. After this, you need an implant analog. Yes, there is an implant analog exactly as you order it. And the implant analogs, as I told you, always it's the same implant analog, whether it is 3.7 or 4.3 or 4.8 or 5.5. So you don't have to be too much worried about what diameter of the analog. It is the same. After this, you select the abutments that you want. With the abutments, you select the abutment with the shoulder according to the thickness of the gum. You select the O-ring, you select the octa, even if even you select the multi-unit abutments all with different heights of the mucosa. Then you need the good screws that also to fix if it's a screw retained, it is available in the same system. So every system, it is there. But I am sure not every dentist wants to use the complete different systems. I know some dentists, all right? For example, me, myself, all in my clinic, in my biopsy clinic, all my prosthodontists, they love the coupling system. That's it. So they don't go to the solid, okay? Of course, in case we have cases of all in four, they need the multi-unit abutments. If we have cases of overdench, they need the O-ring. There is some cases where we needed to make it completely digital. Yes, there is the digital parts. So I don't want you really to be confused, but we have the full range. And that was the message I wanted to show you. The other unique also, and not many companies that manufacture the zygomatic implants. So for maxillofacial surgeons who would like to use the zygomatic implants, yes, we have a complete big range of all the zygomatic implants that you can think about it. And of course, the zygomatic implants, this is for cases of severely atrophied cases, cases that failure happened due to sinus lift grafting, patients with the tumors, patients who had big accidents, who are removed the whole maxilla and they have no bone. Yes, we have different solutions of the zygomatic. Of course, you need a special training and these cases are very few, to be honest, all right? Where you need to make fixed processes for patients with tumors or with accidents or patients with having no bone at all. And you are trained to use the zygomatic implants. Yes, it is there and you can have it. And uh, I had also the pleasure. Uh, I was invited to visit the facility in Switzerland. That was uh, three years ago when we had the, it was the same time of the World Cup in 2018. So we visited the factory and I was impressed and amazed with the uh, high quality, the amazing, beautiful uh, facilities in Switzerland. And at the same time, 
we had chance in the evenings to watch the football games. I remember we were there with a group of colleagues, also a group, uh, some, I remember there was a colleague from India with us in that visit. There, yeah, there was Dr. John with us and uh, we were visiting this facility and we really enjoyed the time in Switzerland. So now we finished talking about every part about Implant Swiss, all right? So I covered to you all the parts, which is really important for the people who want to use the system, all right? And now I will talk the last part of my lecture, talking about a concept I would like the dentist to know it, and I will show you, will share with you some clinical cases. Is that fine? <clears throat> so, if you want to place implants and you have a completely dentured case, I want you to remember there is a key positioning implants. What I mean by key positioning implants that you must place the implants in the region of the canine and the region of the first molar. Because why? Because the canine is the longest tooth in the mouth and the molar, the first molar, is the first tooth that it erupts in our body at the age of six. So God made for us and gave us a message. I made the canine the longest root and I made the first molar with a big surface area and it is the first tooth to erupt in the human. So these are essential. These are keystones of the arch. So once you want to rehabilitate a case, you want to place implants, do not avoid or exclude these positions, the canine and the first molar. So if you have the option to place the implant in the region of the lateral or central or first premolar, no, you must place the implants in the canine because this is a key positioning. You must place the implants in the first molar area, not in the second premolar, not in the second molar. So this is important and remember this. These are critical positions once you have a completely edentulous case to place the implants in the canine and then place the implants in the first molar. Also remember <clears throat> that there is a lot of forces, all right, that we have it in the jaws. Of course, the anterior region does not have much forces like the molar regions. That's why we have less than 100 in Newton, okay, and the Newton is about 50 kilogram of forces in the anterior part, while in the molars have five times higher so this you have to keep in mind. And once you would want to decide for the number of implants that you need for a completely dentulous case and where you want to distribute the implants, please always remember, don't make more than two adjacent posterior pontics. That means in the posterior area, you cannot place some implants in the canine and the implant in the region of the second molar. That means you have a three pontics. It's not allowed to have more than two why? Because there's always a flexion. There is a longest span and the flexion is a lot. And imagine a one pontic span, okay, can have little flexures like 11.3 kilogram, but two pontics is eight times more. So imagine the flexion that you might have on your bridge. If it is one pontic, it is one, if it is two pontics, it is eight times. That's why always consider to place as much implants as you can. Why? Because every time the dentist, with the follow-up, it is this is the pain on our neck. We can make a beautiful surgery. We can make a beautiful prosthetic. But how long this case will last? We don't want the patients to come to us with a fractured porcelain because of the flicture. We don't want the patients to keep coming to us because of of screw loosening. Why? Because you have a placed less number of implants. So my message to you, please try to use as much number of implants as you can use in any individual case in order to decrease the flexure. There is also a mandibular flexure. That's why we don't make the mandible if we place implants in this area of the second molar as one piece. Imagine now, like, look at me here. You open your mandible. What happens? The mandible become smaller, the arch becoming smaller. So imagine you are placing implants, you are making one piece of bridge, the patient wants to eat, he open his mouth, the mandible goes smaller, the implants goes with the bone, and the bridge is rigid. So we have the bridge fracture. 
So always remember in the mandible, never make one piece bridge if you have implants up to the second molar. You can make it one piece like or in four when all the implants are the inter mental foramen area. So if your implants are in the anterior area, in the anterior area, when you open your mouth, there is no flexion here. So you can have it one piece. But if you have your implant up to the second molar, never ever make the mandible as one piece bridge. Why? Because of the flexibility and the flexure of the bone. And the implants are rigid. So even sometimes if you have long span bridge or natural teeth, okay, nature will compensate it because the teeth, okay, there's periodontal ligaments, they can move in the bone, but the implants are rigidly fixed in the bone, okay, and then there will be no compensation, no flexibility. And <clears throat> especially if you are forced to make cantilever, if you want to make a cantilever, please make the cantilever as short as possible and use as, as much number of implants that you can use. Because what happened to the cantilever? Look at this diagram. We have two implants carrying three teeth. That means one pontic. And let's say the ideal force is 100%, all right? If you look here at the upper part where we have a cantilever, the forces on the implants are 200%. 200%, that double. Imagine two implants carrying three teeth is 100%, the ideal. If you have two implants and one cantilever, the forces are doubled. But if you have three implants for three crowns, the forces are reduced to 67%. And if you have implants on a tribod, that means they are not on the same line, you are decreasing the forces to 33%. This is, I learned from Carl Mish, Contemporary Implant Dentistry textbook. He write this and after a very good mechanical test that, that is proving to you the position of the implants, the number of implants is very, very important. Regardless, whatever implants you are using, you are using implant Swiss or you are using Stroman or using Astra or using Nobel, the number of implants and the position of the implants is very, very important. <laughs> and the message I would like to also to tell you in the anterior maxilla, in the aesthetic zone, always try to place implants in the midline. Avoid the centrals. Why? Because you have the incisive foramen. And anyway, if you want to place six implants, there is no room for six implants. So I can place four implants in the canine lateral. Canine lateral, I avoid the two centrals. So I will get better emergency profile. I can get beautiful midline. So remember this, try not to place implants in the midline. Let me show you some clinical cases. I will share with you this first case, all right? A patient come to us with some badly broken teeth and we can see that the teeth are like tilted and we need to make some adjustments. So I always recommend that we, you do some orthodontic treatment if you want to have an ideal case. Do not just place implants in the gap where you have it. So this patient, after we pulled up the hopeless teeth, we made an orthodontic treatment. We divided the spaces in the way we wanted. And after we finish the orthodontic treatment, we took this scan and this is the time we wanted to place our implants. But what was surprising for us in this case, and this I want to share with you the management, the thin bone, you can see when with the CT scan, we realize that the patients have as thin as 2.8 millimeter of bone at the crest. And I don't like always just to shave the bone to have a wider bone, because also no patients would like to have long crowns, especially after a good orthodontic treatment. So you need to do a technique, something called bone splitting. And you need a good implants that can get you a good primary stability. So this case, and especially by the way, patients after orthodontic treatment or patients who are having hereditary missing laterals, all right, lateral incisors, always there, when there's no teeth, there is no bone. So you are expecting to have a thin bone. So how we manage such case in order to keep this bone as there? And in these cases with young people, I need to find the good solution for that. The mandible is the same thing. Every gap we had for this patients, he had a thin bone, thin bone everywhere. 
but I don't want to make it complicated. I don't want to make two surgeries. I don't want to take a block graft and augment and come back again after three months to place the implants. I need to think of a technique that I can place the implants in one surgery. So what we have done after we studied all the parts, there is no single place we had more than 3.8 millimeter. And if you tell me implants, they have a 3.3. 3.3 implants, you cannot put it in 3.8 for two reasons, because you need one millimeter all around the implants. So the implants, which is a 3.3, I need a bone that it is 5.3 millimeter in diameter. So if I have a 3.8, and also I don't like a very thin implants for molars. I don't like 3.3 millimeter implants for a molar. I like to put 3.7, I like to put 4.3. So what do I need to do in these cases? So let me share with you how we made a surgical solution. Look at this case, uh, how thin it is. And I did a technique called bone splitting. And I use special wedges, all right, that to keep the parts away. So we split the two cortical bones completely in three millimeter narrow ridge. And then you need to prepare your osteotomy after you make splitting. So the cortical bone is preserved and you need to place the implants. Look, this is the implant Swiss implants there. You need an implants that with its macro design to give you an excellent primary stability. And this is important. So the implants were replaced, as you can see here, you can appreciate that how is the cortical bone is surrounding the implants. So instead of three millimeter of bone that I have, I divide it into two parts, 1.5 millimeter buccally, 1.5 millimeter palatally, and I place the implants like a sandwich in between. So the implants are there, they are with excellent primary stability, Then I augment bone in the gap because it's already splitted. And by the way, there are some cases I did not even use bony graft, the blood alone, because it is a bounded cavity, it will turn into bone. But we as a dentist, we love to fill every gap we see. We love fillings. So there's no harm if you put bony graft. There is no harm if you put membrane, right? This can be making you more relaxed, accepting a faster integration. And then you can close. Even if it is one tooth missing, there is also other techniques for bone spreading, how to spread the bone because the maxilla is really very, very flexible. You can use these chisels to split the bone, as you can see here, and you can place your implants. So once your implants is in the bone and it is surrounded by cortical bone and you have a good implant design and good implants macro design, you can place the implants with confidence. So look here, for example, I placed one implant per tooth. I placed the implants, as you can see it here, in this very thin bone. And these are the implant Swiss implants. The lower jaw is the same. We had also the thin bone. So we did the bone splitting. The same thing, we used the chisels. But remember, the mandible is not flexible as the maxilla. So we use the wedges. Sometimes you might have a crack in the bone. It doesn't matter. It will heal. You are augmenting it. The most important thing that you have the good barrier, the cortical bone. So this is I, how I prepare my osteotomy after I do the bone splitting. So I use the same drills of the kit, but only after splitting, I make the two parts apart and I can maintain the parts apart with the implants. So my implants will work as a wedge. So my implants are there. I can augment, I can put membrane and I can finish my case. Same thing on the other part, same procedure. These are my wedges. So my wedges, they are keeping the two parts, the buccal and the palatal bone apart while I am preparing my implants. But after I put my implants, my implant will be like a wedge. So this is like bone splitting using wedges. And these are also, look how beautiful is the conical connection with implant Swiss. You can see the hex parts, okay, exactly. Look at the upper one. You see can the internal, the hex so to prevent the rotation of the abutment. At the same time, I need in this thin bone, I don't need any bone resorption. I want the bone to stay. That's why I will use the platform switching abutments later on. So this is the complete.
ceramic array, and this is the prosthetic completed. So the patients have his orthodontic treatment is done. He has all his crowns. Look, there is no crown is long. I did not shave the bone to have a wider bone. I just suspended the bone and the bone is, sta is stable. Look to the papilla, how beautiful it is. So this is the way I completed the case. I want to share with you also another case. <clears throat> Look at this case. Patients, they can come to us like this. Patients with periodontitis, patients with mobile teeth. And now this is the time they want to replace their implants. Look at this case. Patients really now, they come to implants even after hopeless teeth. So imagine such case. And usually when I have periodontitis and I have bad teeth, I always make a clearance. I always extract all the teeth, all or none. That's what I tell my patients. If I leave a tooth for you, it will destroy my whole work. So I remove the all. And by the way, <clears throat> in cases of periodontitis, all right, I don't like to make immediate extraction and implantation. Sometimes there's risk. I'm afraid about the infection. They will lose my implants. So I extracted, I waited for the healing, and I took my CT scan to evaluate the case after the healing. I saw that the soft tissue is matured enough very well. And during this time, I was my patients always with my periodontist trying to control the health of the gingiva and the maxilla because the patient did not want to lose the maxilla and the mandible at the same time. And she was complaining from the mandible because it was like a great for mobility. So this is the time we open the flap. We look at the bone, excellent bone healing. So why the rush? The bone now is healthy. The bone has no pathogens. There is no anaerobic bacteria. So this is the time now I want to start to place my implants. And as I told you, if in these cases, I don't put one piece of bridge. So I need to plan where to place my implants. So in this case, I decided to put two implants in the regions of K9 and K9 then put implants in the region of four and the region of six and the region of four and six on the other side. Because my plan, that's why I gave the name for my lecture, backward planning. So you need to know what you need to have a prosthetic. Then you go back with your thoughts and you place the implants where you want it. So during the surgery, I'm not placing an implant in the canine and implants in the five and implants in the seven, like I'm leaving one space between the others. So I need to decide from this level, from this moment, how, what is my prosthetic solution? So I decided not to make the mandible as one piece because I know there's mandibular flexure. I know that I want to make it more than one piece and ideally is a three pieces. So I want to have an anterior bridge, two implants in the regions of the canine. Also, if the patient doesn't want to pay too much money. So two implants in the regions of the canine are enough to carry six teeth. All right, because in the anterior, as we said, we don't have too much forces. So two implants in the canine, they can carry the four lower incisor teeth and they are thin and small. Then one implant in the region of the first premolar and implants in the second premolar molar, and I make three units bridges or three pieces of a bridge. So the case was completed. This is the way how it was taken. Positioning implants are considered. Remember when I said always place the implant in the region of the canine and the six? So that's what we have done. Implants in the canine, implant in the six, one implant in the first premolar on either side. Why? Because I want to make three pieces of bridge. This is during healing, and this is the design of my bridge. Three pieces, one, four, five, six, canine to canine, four, five, six. This is the ideal. So if the patients wants to pay only, for example, for six implants, I make 12 crowns. And you know, most of the mastication is always on the first molar. Then this is the way, how is the case completed and the patient is happy with this prosthetic. Beautiful, good emergency profile, platform switching abutments, three pieces of bridge, and the patient was so happy. So we are waiting to do the maxilla once the patient has more money and she wants to go with it. This is the x-ray after, beautiful. Look to the height of the tissue level of the abutments. Look the platform switching, how nice it is. This is the way I like to finish my cases.
Another case, Hazim. Look at Hazim. Hazim, he came up to this also, these hopeless teeth in the maxilla. So we decided to make gum control. Sometimes I push the patients once. I don't place for him the implants unless my orth, my periodontist give me the green light. I always wait. I say to my periodontist, I send you this case. You can preserve the teeth that who are not hopeless. Usually they are teeth with grade one mobility and or maybe grade two, then they extract the grade three and the grade four. So this is the case completely edentulous in the maxilla. Maybe lift, we left one tooth for the occlusion. This is the way when we evaluated the case. This is the way where we know there is little bone under the sinus. So we examine with the CBCT or the situation. And this is the time where we decided to make our osteotomy. It plays our implants. Then during the surgery, I extracted the rest of the teeth because I wanted to make it immediate. So I controlled the periodontal problem. Then it's not a problem. You can make immediate extraction on implantation. But if you don't want to control periodontal problem because you know that it is hopeless, then you extract and wait. So this is not a golden rule, but always do your implants at a time that there is no infection. So we place the implants as you can see it here. Then the, the time also we extracted the rest of the teeth and we left only one tooth because we wanted to maintain the vertical dimension of the occlusion. And look how is the beauty and the excellent primary stability of implant Swiss implants. This is uh, the case with the healing abutments. And this is the X-ray with all the implants are in place. So we will place the implants on the right side with indirect sinus lifting. The implants are placed here. And these teeth, they have no mobility at all. They are rigid, sound. And we made our design how to complete the case. This is after healing. This is the time when we were ready to make our impression and of course look at the beautiful okay healing abutments with different heights so according to the case and this is a closed tray impression transfer also from implant system so if you have the implants as you can see it here it's easier to make a closed tray impression technique you fabricate the abutments you prepare your bridge the bridge is ready here as you can see this is all cemented. I'm not worried about cemented bridges. Actually, I love cemented bridges because I have a shoulder on my abutment and the shoulder is at the level of the gum. So there will be no risk that the cement will go inside the tissue that I cannot clean or have peri-implantitis. This is the bridge, as you can see it here. These are the analogs. And this is the case completed in the maxilla and with the mandible. The patient is happy and we were happy. Look at this case, Radiya. Radiya, this is also patients, they come to us like this. Clearance was done for the, for the maxilla and later for the mandible. We place the implants as you can see here. We avoid the midline. In the maxilla, there is no problem to make one piece bridge because there is no flexure in the maxilla. But the mandible, you cannot. But always, I consider the same concept, implants in the canine region and implants in the first molar region. I complete my surgery. I go to the mandible after a clearance and healing because that patient, it, it would be a risk if I make immediate extraction and implantation. That's why we waited. We place six implants in the mandible, the same protocol. Same concept, implants are there in the region of the canine, the region of the first molar. I have put in my plan the prosthetic design and that's what I do the backward planning. So in the mandible, I decided to make three pieces of a bridge from canine to canine, from four to six, from four to six. In the maxilla, because I want to have more implants for support in the posterior area, so I place the implants in the canine and the canine. And I know that two implants from canine to canine are not enough to carry for anterior teeth. So what was my solution in this case to make it as one unit? 
So this is the mandible after we completed it because the healing time for the mandible is shorter. That's why we were faster in solving the problem for the patients. So the patients has the 12 teeth in the mandible, as you can see it here complete. The impression was taken and then this is the maxilla completed. So the maxilla, we made it one piece because I don't like only two implants to carry six anterior teeth. That's why I connected the implants in the region of the six and the region of first premolar together. So this is the way how we can com we completed the maxilla and the mandible, all right? And this is the completed case, all right? The patient was really so happy from hopeless teeth to a beautiful upper and lower. And it was very good case. And the patient is satisfied and happy, all right? Of course, we had to put some pink porcelain here, but it looks nice. And the patient is having also low smile line. So this pink porcelain will not show because sometimes with the pink porcelain, you know it. We don't have all the colors available. So you cannot really match 100% the gum color of the patients. But if the patient has a low profile or low smile line, it doesn't matter. Rahma, same case, all right? But this is a case of all in four I want to share with you. So patients who are old and they have no bone above the inferior alveolar nerve, what are you gonna do? Here, there is no bone above the nerve. Of course, there is a technique that I love to do and I lectured even in India and I made hands-on course about nerve transpositioning. But of course, nerve transpositioning is a technique for advanced surgeons and it is also a traumatic surgery for the patients. That's why in some cases, I love the concept of all in four, especially with completely edentulous. So if a patient has completely, uh, he has no teeth at all, why not to place the implants in the anterior region, as you can see here, tilt the last two implants, as you can see here, finish the surgery. These are the implants, how they appear immediately after surgery. The last two implants are tilted 30 degrees, the implants in the anterior area as one piece, and then you can have the bridge completed as you can see here, and the patients can have a fixed ceramic and porcelain in all the teeth. The case is completed till we do the upper jaw. So this is all in four case. This is the X-ray, and look how is the beauty when you are using the multi-unit abutments and how is the variety of uh, with implant Swiss. By the way, even implant Swiss, if you don't want to use the multi-unit abutments, you want to use the couple abutments, they can give you angled abutments that they can be fitting. So you can do this case with the classical abutments. So not every case, you must do it with multi-unit abutments. You can use a couple abutments, angulated abutments and straight abutments. The technician can adjust on the parallelometer inside the laboratory and can give you a result like this. Another case, this is nice to share with you. Also, completely edentulous case after extraction, look at this very thin bone. What options do you have? You have to shave the bone or to split the bone. I don't like shaving bone. I, I appreciate every piece of bone I have. So this case, I know I have a thin bone, but I know that I can do splitting. So this is the same concept that I showed you before for bone splitting. So you can split the entire mandible and use the wedges, the same as I explained. And then you use the implant Swiss implants because you get an excellent primary stability with it. So the implants are there, all right? And look, with all, with even bone splitted, you can have an excellent primary stability more than 35 newtons. Meter. And this is the special design about implant Swiss. Even in a splitted bone, because the, the threads, they will cut and catch, you can get a 35 Newton centimeter. So this is the case with the four implant Swiss are in a place. This is during the planning, how I splitted the complete mandible, how I planned the last implants to be tilted at 30 degrees and the implants are straight and this is the X-ray after. I don't have the prosthetic to show you, but we already showed you enough. This is another also, Rawia Kalkish. Same case, patients completely edentulous. There is no bone under 
designers. You can see the bone is only preserved in the anterior region because the patient has only anterior crowns. So this is a case before the surgery. And we decided to make all in four. <clears throat> I was very happy about this case because my assistant was my daughter and she was like so excited to see a completely edentulous case and how we plan and how we to rehabilitate the patients. And you can see this we do it during the Corona time with the double mask and the special face shield. And that makes really our life complicated. But of course, we have to be very careful. So during this COVID time, yes, you can do every procedure you want, but please protect yourself. Try to wear double mask, try to wear face shield and be careful, get very good suction to avoid. Make sure that your patient is COVID uh, negative. With patients with completely edentulous and I need to big, make big surgery, I request the patients really to bring me a negative COVID test before I do the surgery. Because you don't want to make a big surgery for a patient, then she become positive and with the stress of the surgery and she get ill and then she dies and then they blame you. So please, during this COVID time, if you have patients, even they have no symptoms and you wanna make a big procedure, please ask them to bring you a COVID-19 negative results. So this is the case. We have it planned. We placed also implant Swiss implants. I love it with, the, with their excellent primary stability. The implants were replaced on a concept of all in four. But by the way, the all in four in the maxilla, I like to place all in six. So in the maxilla, please use more number of implants. All right. So here, if you can see, we finished the mandible and this is the maxilla. We extracted all the teeth because the patients did not want to leave any tooth. <clears throat> and we placed the implants as you can see here. So this is all in six in the maxilla, all in four in the mandible. So you can put four implants straight. You can put the implants in the region of the canine, canine, the tilted ones in the region of the five, avoiding the sinus and you can paste two implants in the central and you can make it as one piece in the maxilla and one piece in the mandible because the implants are in the intra foramen. Remember the O-ring, this is also a simple case. I just want to show you how is the O-ring from implant to Swiss look like. And you can choose the height of the ball abutments according to your tissue level and you can give the patients the denture. Another case, this patient's also, we extracted all the teeth and we wanted to make him also implants, but we decided to make it labless surgery. So we make some drilling guides. We put this gutta perca, we take the x-ray with it. So we know what is the direction of our implants if you wanna make it flabless. And I, made my drilling guide. I placed my two main drills. I placed the two implants. As you can see it here, I put the O-ring and I completed the case flapless immediately. And the patient was able to go home with his denture on the same day and enjoy the stability. Because these patients, they come to us, their problem, they don't have a stable denture. So you can give them a quick solution and I didn't want really to make more implants for this patient because he is 94 years old. Look at this case. This is a very interesting case. I think this is the last case I will show you today. This is a patient with impacted canine. Patient has gap in the mouth because the canine is impacted. But look how huge is the canine. And I know when I want to remove this canine, I will end up with no bone. To place. So what I did, look at this case. I decided to remove the canine. The canine, I was doing a sudden, as at least traumatic surgery as possible to remove the canine as you can see it here. Look at the big gap I have it after the canine. I made an augmentation with a membrane and I told the patients to come and see me again four months later. The patients came four months later I opened the flap, 
I was able to place my two implant Swiss implants, as you can see it here. And look, you can appreciate how much white bone we have after the augmentation. So these are the two implants in a place. These are the crowns finished. And this is the case completed with a hereditary missing canine and impacted canine. This is the last case with a bone ring. I just want to give you one message because of the time is really running. I don't want to discuss much, but there's also a technique where you can make a blocky graft and you can take rings from the symphysis in the anterior. But what is nice about this case, I just want to show you, these are these ring the graphs that I am using, the, just the secret about it, that you prepare the bed, you are vertically augmenting the mandible, and you can be placing the ring at the same time. But how can I fix the ring? I fix it with the implants. So the same implant Swiss implants, I use them to hold my blocky graft, to hold my rings, fix it, and having the case completed as you see here. Okay, so this is not an everyday case, but the message I want to give you from this case, the primary stability, the special design of the threads of Implant Swiss, where they can hold your bone and finish the case. So we took one hour and a half. I tried to cover with you every part of the Implant uh, Swiss the anatomy of the implants, the prosthetic parts. We were able to show you some parts. I share with you different surgical cases that we are can able to solve it with Implant Swiss. The message I want to tell you that Implant Swiss is an implant. You can use it everywhere in the maxilla, in the mandible, in bone splitting, in soft bone, in hard bone, in atrophied cases. So these implants are really made for every site. And the prosthetic parts are amazing and you can use them and you can finish your case in the way you want. Oh, we, have, we have some uh, questions. Yes, of so, course. I want, to, uh, I want to give the verification code for this lecture. Wait, wait please. Let, perhaps we can answer some questions before the okay. verification code. Yeah. So uh, we have a question by uh, Raghav, Dr. Raga Verma. Whenever we screw impression transfer over short implants, Yes. Even after tightening it completely, there is a lateral micro movement of the analog. How do you correct it? Sure. Lateral movement of the implant analog, it will, it will never happen because you have the impression post is very stable in the impression. So you need to use as he, he meant he meant impression. he meant the micro movement of the impression transfer. Not the analog. The impression transfer, micro movements, if you are using a good impression material, it will go back in its place. There will be no micro movement. If the implant is short, if the implant is completely osteointegrated, there is no micro movements. And if you have a good impression technique, like for you are using, for example, the Imprigum, because this is very hard impression material, so it will stay. I I never faced any micro movements in the implant analog. Or sorry, okay. transfer. Another another question by uh, Dr. Abhay Dapartha. Um, he's asking you to please share experience regarding immediate loading of these implants. Also elaborate a little bit more about platform switching concept and uh, most more stepper. Uh, tapered in these implants. So first, please share experience regarding the immediate loading. All right. Immediate loading, this is really a big, big, big subject. All right. There is guidelines for immediate loading. You need to have always a good design of the implants. So the design of Implant Swiss is very good for primary stability. And even Implant Swiss now, okay, they designed and they are manufacturing an implants called uh, aggressor aggressor implants for immediate loading and actually exactly. start in the next couple of weeks a clinical research uh, for using the aggressor implants so they are even modifying the design of the implants but with the existing implants 
if I have good diameter of implant, and I have good length, all right, I can make immediate loading in certain conditions. I can divide them into green, yellow, and red. A green, that means you can make immediate loading with safety. Red, never make immediate loading. So if you have long implants, good diameter in the anterior zone, patients with good oral conditions, that means no periodontitis, and never number of implants, I can make immediate loading. If I have number of implants is less, I have the gap in the region of the premolar, all right, I can make immediate loading with the precaution. I can call it yellow. So what means by yellow? That if you want to make immediate loading, try to put temporary crowns, try to keep it out of occlusion for the first few months, and always splint the prosthetic part together. Don't make one crown individually. Red, for example, first molar, never make immediate loading, no matter what is the implant you have. Single, first molar, I never made an immediate loading because this is the key positioning implants. All the load of mastication of occlusion on this first molar. Also the canine, I will never make immediate loading on canine, even it is an anterior tooth. Why? Because of the lateral movement, the canine guidance, all the forces on the canine. So this is red. So I don't want people always to get confused with the concept of immediate loading. Immediate loading is great. We love it. Patients will love it. But you have to know where is the green zone. What was the second the, question, Bart? The second part was uh, if you can elaborate a little bit about platform switching concept and about the most tapered of the implants. The most, what is the last part? Most tapered. Most what? Most, most tapered implants. Most, you know, the more tapered. Ah, comors, the okay, the comors, okay. Well, platform switching is a concept, is like this. You are using an abutment that is smaller than the diameter of the implant. And this is was actually this concept was found by coincidence mm -hmm. when company they did not have abutments with the same diameter of the implants. So they gave the dentist a smaller diameter of abutment to use on the implants. And the dentist was confused. How can I use smaller abutments on the implants? Then they realized that with follow-up with these cases, that the bone is more stable at the crystal bone, there is no resorption. So as long you are having a smaller abutment that it is away from the margins of the implants, that is platform switching. That means you are switching the platform from big diameter to a smaller diameter in order to keep the gap, okay, between the abutment and the implants away from the crystal bone. Now the cone mores is only an addition not got nothing to do with the implant platform switching because there are some implant companies they make platform switching without cone mores with only a smaller abutment than the implants the cone mores it makes a friction grip of the two parts together so now the planes you know the planes the wheel of the planes because the plane is very heavy once the plane is landed and it hits the land the connection between the wheels of the airplane jet and the body of the plane is made on a cone morse. And that is the idea it came. This is the strongest mechanic. And even with forces, all right, this, it will be like every time the patient is eating, it's like this conical connection is getting more friction by time. It's not getting loose by time. So that is the idea of the cone morse, that it is tapered 11 degrees. Con Morse eliminates uh, the micro movements between the abutment and the implant totally. Exactly. Okay, I, I also it. have a question, which is my question. I'm not a doctor, although I'm many years in the business, but I have a question. How do you determine the depth of the bone splitting, especially in the mandible? <clears throat> if I have a millimeter of bone, all right, and I want to place regular diameter implants, okay, I do bone splitting in the mandible or in the maxilla. 
But what was is your question exactly? How deep? How do? How you, deep? Yes. How do you? Uh, okay. I I go as deep as my plan for the length of my implants. So I am away from the inferior alveolar nerve or from the mental okay. in two millimeter. Okay, but I go as deep as the length of my implants. And of course, I consider two millimeter safety zone from my mental foramen. Okay. So thank you very much for uh, the interesting, uh, wait, I, sorry. Now I have another question. I see a pop-up question. Okay. Uh, before impression, sorry, one second. The question is again from Dr. Radha Verma. Before impressions, movement is felt definitely even after tightening the screw of the impression transfer to the implant. So ask this question. It happens only in case of short implants. And the next question he have is, uh, how are you managing your cases without using UCLA's uh, for school retained prosthetics? Okay. The first part for the impression transfer, you need always, especially if you have a thick gum, to make an X-ray control to make sure that the impression coping is fitting exactly on the implants because sometimes there is tissues and you think that the implant or the transfer coping is completely fixed to the implants while it is not. There is some mucosa between the impression transfer and the platform of the implants. That's why you can see a micro movement. And this is what I do always as a routine. In the beginning of my practice in life 20 years ago, I used to take an X-ray with every impression transfer fixed on the implants to make sure that it is really fitting 100%. Is no fitting. But now with experience, what I do when I put the impression transfer on the implants, I try to move it with my fingers. If there is micro movements, all right, there's two options. Whether your implant is mobile, is not completely osteointegrated, or there is some mucosa between the impression coping and the implants. So what happened with the colleague, I am sure does not got to do with short implants. No matter the implant is four millimeter or 14 millimeter, as long as it is fully osteointegrated 100%, there will be no movement 100%. So whether he has in the case that he is mentioning that the implants are not really fully integrated, so the implant itself has the micro movement, or maybe he has a thick gum and the impression post was not fitting 100% on the implant platform. So take an x-ray, that is the decision, and you can know. What was it? The, the, the second question was about how do you do the cases uh, without using UCLA's if you want to uh, do a screw retained prosthesis? Well, if you want to use the screw retained prosthesis, you need to use UCLA abutments and also implant Swiss they have, or you can use the OCTA system. That's it. With the screw retained, so, you need to use the OCTA or to use UCLA. You cannot solve it without. So, so right now we don't have UCLA's, but we will have but you can use the OCTA system. Okay, so uh, as far as I see, there is no more question. Let me see one second. Uh, so Ragav, again, Dr. Ragav says that in my hand, when he take out uh, an implant, and if I try outside patient mouth, still it has lateral movement. He's referring to his previous question about the micro movements between the implant and the transfer. Well, if this has happened, there must be something wrong. Uh, that I, I, I cannot imagine. I, a, I agree. I agree. That I agree. particular, yeah, maybe that yeah. particular implant is really not osseo integrated. But if he says outside the patient's mouth, but I don't. Uh, uh, manufacturing. Uh, 
Yeah, Raghav, I think uh, perhaps the problem is that uh, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, no, no, sorry, Raghav, I cannot put your audio on. Uh, but uh, we will refer to this question specifically. I think it's a technical problem and it's not related to uh, the, the system. The idea in the system is that there should be no mechanical movement between the implant and the, and the answer. Uh, we have a question from uh, Dr. Dayanand Kala. Where is the success, what is the success ratio of the implant? Success, the, the system. Success rate of the implants. Generally, myself, I have my own statistics. I have success rate of ninety-eight point six. Nobody can tell you hundred percent. If anybody tell you I'm hundred percent with any implant system in the world, he is lying. Nobody can have hundred percent. We always can have some failings. So I, I, I would like also to address this uh, problem. Uh, I'm not a doctor, as you know, but I'm with Adin. I was with Adin five years and then with Norris Medical for five years. And now I'm already two years with uh, Implant Swiss. Uh, in case of failures, it's not, it's not, it have nothing to do with the implant. <coughs> 99 point, I don't know, 999%. The problems are sometimes with, um, Allocating correctly the implant is, is sometimes the procedure, is sometimes the mouth health of the patient, sometimes the after, after surgery, um, you know, way that the, the, the patient um, takes care of, of his mouth and this kind of stuff. It's, it's almost have nothing to do with the implant. So uh, I want to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tamimi. So uh, anyway, I want to thank you very much, Dr. <laughs> Professor Tamimi. And uh, I hope to see you maybe in one of the exhibitions soon as the COVID-19 uh, will, will vanish and we will be able to meet each other either in, uh, in uh, Jordan, maybe in Turkey, in uh, Germany. Yeah. <laughs> you are traveling America. all around the world. So maybe I will catch up with you. So thank you very much and thank you all the participants. And uh, we will have another um, um, webinar in about two or three weeks. And we will ask everyone to join again. And this will be about iSystem, which is another system the same company has. So thank you very much and thank keep you. safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank hosting you. this webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.